Thanks, Felicia. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we actually have a few ghost styles that I'm going to show you. Um, this is uh, the ghost that we have um, for the materials list. It has a, a easel from Michael's extruded ring for arms and the half inch ball for his head. So that's the one we're going to do today, but I'm also going to show you um, what you see online. They're using a tomato cage to make a glowy ghost. So I'm going to show you that version today. And then I'm also going to show you a quick uh, cone and a half ball version. So for this guy on the easel, you're going to need an eight inch half ball. Um, this is our white craft foam. And it's, um, it's, it's really great for the, of course, the, the white ghost because you're not gonna see that ball through the, through the white. Um, but that's what we used for him today. His arms are cut from a 10 inch extruded ring. This is our um, white extruded ring. And then for his fabric, I cut, um, I left the 44 inch uh, width of the fabric that it comes in, and then I cut it to, what did I cut it to? I cut it to 62 inches long. So 62 by 44 is what I used on this guy. And then the um, easel, it's just a wire uh, floral easel. And then these are actually a lot longer than you need, but um, we're going to use them today just to show you how to attach them. So I think I have on there a 50 count um, white cord string for your for your glowy ghost. You'll need something to hang him with. Um, this is just fish line. Um, and then to secure the fish line, you'll need like a button is, is what I'm going to show you today. Um, and then if you're going to do the white glowy ghost, you'll need a 70 inch, this is a 70 inch square, um, of white fabric or white sheet, or I think I have, um, listed on there what I used from Michael's. And then what I did is I just cut a, um, 44 by 70 inch piece and then a 26 by 70 inch piece. And then I just, um, glued them together along that along that edge to get my 70 by 70. And then you'll need a piece of black felt to do his eyes. Eyes, nose, mouth, whatever you you want to make your face out of. All right. So get this stuff all out. So um, I think I have fabric glue listed and the materials list, but um, fabric glue is not gonna dry fast enough to use for this class. So, I'm just going to glue it with a glue gun. So you're literally going to fold this piece in half. And then put it, sorry, in half like face sides together. So you want it inside out. And all we're going to do is glue it like a big pillowcase. Is that right? That's right. With it folded in half, you're just gonna go down both sides with a bead of fabric glue all the way down. And like I said, I'm using a glue gun for this because it would never dry in time. 
and you might be able to get away with a glue gun if it doesn't get too hot. I'm not sure what freezing would do with a glue gun though. It might break apart and not do so well. There's one side. Where are people calling from today? We have some from Massachusetts, Minnesota, California, Michigan, Georgia. Well, welcome everyone. So everyone watching is going to have nice colorful ghosts on their porches. I got a lot of compliments at Michael's when I was buying this fabric. All right, we're just gonna open it up. So like I said, you're just gonna have a big pillowcase looking thing. And it's not gonna make much sense right now, but it will once we get it on him. So, Get it out of there, like so. I don't know if we're gonna have to maybe move the camera up a little bit so that people can <laughs> see the top of this thing. I didn't think this project through. All right, so take your easel. And we're gonna just squish this half ball right on top. And you're gonna to wanna to push it on there pretty good. As far down as you can so that hook goes right up into it and that kind of help keeps it stable. Now I have it in there, push straight in all the way. And then his arms, all I did was cut this wreath in half and all of our uh, extruded rings have one side that's, that has a seam, which is a good place to, um, to know how to cut it in half because you can do it right directly across from that one and then you know that you have it in half. All right, and these are gonna be his arms, but we need to glue them together a little. So where, let me do overhead. So where these two come together, you're gonna to want them to be flush. So you're just gonna cut a little wedge off each side so that they come together. And you want them to come together, I don't know, so they're about maybe three inches apart in the front, four inches apart in the front. About like that. And go ahead and glue that. Low temp. Sorry guys, um, low temp glue gun works best with our foam. We, um, I know there are high temp guns out there, but a lot of times they get so hot that they melt the foam so it doesn't really attach nice. I'm just gonna let that sit and glue. Um, so another thing you'll need is our is also in the list is uh, zip ties. And that's how we're gonna attach the arms to this frame. Oh, if it ever dries. So while that's drying, um, all I did for his face is just cut out these two ovals. I didn't do a mouth for him, I thought, 
it would be a little busy with all the patterns on the on the material but just two ovals I cut out of out of the black felt and the ovals are about I'm gonna say three and a half long by about two and a half wide we ready yet not quite okay so if you're having trouble with your with your arms getting secured, you can use either pins or if you have any little wood picks, toothpicks, um, floral pins, anything, just, I would just pin from one side to the other on both sides or use toothpicks in one side and one side and that kind of Holds it together until it's glue sets. We're gonna weave that through. I'm gonna bring that up probably about probably about four inches from the bottom of the ball-ish. About four inches. Let's see. Yeah. Four to six inches from the bottom of the ball. And you're just going to zip tie, hold that secure, and then zip tie to this other leg. There we go. And then I would trim off these. So that's what we have so far, if you're looking at it from the front. Oh. <laughs> We're trying to get the camera up high enough. Now we have a little bit of props in the back corner there, but just ignore that. It's okay. Um, at least you can see what I'm doing here. So that's what you have from the front. Bottom of the ball, about four to six inches down, his little arms. And then literally... All we're going to do is drop this cape or this pillowcase, whatever we want. Oh, I'm splitting open already. Yeah, fabric glue won't do this to you. It just takes a little longer to dry. Reglue my seam. There we go. All right, and then we're just going to slip this right over the top. And then the corner, you're going to feed right over his arm and just put the end of his little arm right in that corner. So it's just that simple. Um, so now, if you wanted, you could put something in his hand. You could hang a little trick-or-treat bucket or put a little pumpkin in his hands or however. So there he is with his little arms. So he just looks like a little trick-or-treater. And then if we wanted to, oh, let's stick these on real quick. So for these, just again, some fabric glue would work. I'm gonna use a glue gun just because it's instant. And then I just put them about 
two inches down from the top of his head. And then if you wanted to do a mouth, you could glue that on right now too. And sometimes it's hard to get all those folds out. Just glue over them. You can't get it. All right. And then for my guy, I put little flowers in his hair. Um, to do that, I just um, clipped the fabric with the scissors and just poked the floral stem right in top of his head. And then if you wanted, you could glue a little pumpkin in his hands. It would be cute. Or like I said, hang a little trick or treat or hang a little sign between his hands. Um, he could be holding on to a spider. Lots of different things. So that's one. Any questions with this one? Nope. All right. So now I'll show you. Uh, same thing. It's an eight inch half ball. Uh, this is a tomato cage, um, but the easel would work just as well for this. Uh, this is a 33 inch tomato cage. So to do this one, you just take the top, or actually this is upside down. So you take the three legs, take a zip tie, Zip tie the three legs together right at the top. Snip off your zip tie end. You're going to add the ball right on top, just like you did with the easel. And you want to just make sure that these are all in even. About like so. So that's just into the bottom. And then um, a 70 inch round works perfect for this size cage. I don't have a round, I have a square. Um, but it will still work. So again, oh, no, no, don't do that yet. Gotta watch me. So if we're gonna do the glowy ghost, we're gonna take your end of your string light and you're gonna zip tie it to the top of your cage. And just pull that end through a little so that there's a light right at the top. Get that in there tight. And then you're literally just going to wrap this guy around. Like I said, this is quite a bit of light. So this is a little longer than you need, but you'll get the idea. And we use white lights just so that they don't show as much through the fabric is all. You can use a lot of lights. You'll just have a glowier ghost, right? So there you have it. <clears throat> Just get them around there ever so often. And then you can also use zip ties along the way, just, you know, here and there, just to keep them, keep them where you want them. Um, so they don't slip around in the wind or when they're getting moved around. Zip tie them in a couple spots.
All right, now we can put on our fabric. Again, this is a 70 inch square that I glued together to make, or I'm sorry, a 44 inch fabric that I glued together to make a 70 inch. All right, there we go. Something like that. And you would add your oval eyes. Like I said, all I did was cut it oval out of black fabric. I'm just going to cut them at the same time just to make them the same shape. And you can pin on a pattern, make a pattern first if it's easier. Or one of those white fabric markup pencils. So there's the eyes. And again, we just add these to the face. Are people all decorated for Halloween? Is this an addition to their porch or are they just starting to decorate? Crickets. All right, let's plug this in and see if I can make it shine for you guys. Oh yeah, sort of. It looks a little sparkly in the, <laughs> in the studio lighting, but on your porch in the dark, it looks less Christmas tree-ish. <laughs> so that's how easy it is to do the glowy ghost. Um, and I also want to show you how easy it is if you don't want him to stand up. So you need some kind of skewer. Um, and it can be a plant steak or a dowel or a pencil or anything like that. Just a thin wooden dowel. And I would put it right through the middle of your ball, all the way in there. And then try to thread your fish line through there. And you could tape this to the end of that dowel if you have trouble getting it in there like I am. Let's try that. Try a little scotch tape. I'm just going to tape end of that. Let's lay it right along that um, edge of that dowel and put a piece of tape around it. And then put that dowel back through.
Well, look at that. It's like a needle and thread. People are loving the lights, though. Good. That's probably the, I mean, it's really pretty cool when they're like that. All right, I took that away too soon because now I want to put it back through the other way so I can make a loop. Yeah, the having that little glow on the porch is just, it's a super cute idea. My goodness. All right, not one of my, not one of my better moves, guys. <laughs> um so yeah. There's a reason that I'm showing you this, I promise. So I'm going to try that again. You want to make a loop on the top of it, correct? Yes. It's what I'm it's what I'm attempting. I want two ends the two ends on the bottom flat side of the ball and a loop at the top. There we go. All right, now we're gonna take these two open ends and we're gonna put them through this button. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna keep the fish line from going through your ball, right? That's just going to hold it a little more secure. So I'm just tying a few knots. And then that will be on the bottom and that's going to hold it from pulling through. Now, if you want, you can put another button at the top and glue the button in place and that'll keep it from uh, the fish line from cutting into the foam on the top when it's swinging around. But that's going to hold it for you. A little bit of glue under there if you want to keep it in place. That's going to keep your fish line secure for you. So then on this, we will just cut a little hole in the top. and thread that through, totally guessing where the top is. And the ball inside, find the little hole that you just made. Find the end of the... fish line. All right. See, now if I could see through, I know that all of you are having the same trouble. <laughs> if I could see what you guys were doing. All right, that's it. So there he is. Now you can hang him from your porch. And he would just swing in the wind and do all that fun stuff. And I mean, realistically, you could pin lights underneath the ball and let them hang. And he could glow too, if you wanted him to. So what's that? Three ghosts so far? Three ghosts. I'm going to say three. All right. And then for a little ghost, um, different materials. So for this guy, the button was a great tip though, Dondi. Thank you. Thank you. And that, I mean, a button, I used a button. You could use a, a piece of thick cardboard, um, a metal washer from like a bolt you know, washer, metal washer you could use. So anything just to keep that from pulling back through is all I was trying to accomplish. All right. So 
now I have these little guys. So here's the one. And here's another one. And they look super cute with big guy here, as you can see. So for these guys, um, these will be more for, I, I think, inside because they're made with all with foam. So they're pretty lightweight and they probably would get kicked around or blown around outside um, unless you staked them in the ground. So you could put a stake in the ground and then um, push the foam cone onto a stake. That would work. That would keep it from, from blowing around. So for that guy, he's on a 12 inch cone. This guy's on an 18 inch cone. And I used a six inch ball. So if you cut this six inch ball in half, like so. If you make the cut straight, if you just sand them together, that makes that all nice and smooth for you. Not that it has to be really smooth. It's just the bottom of his head, but looks nicer. All right. So um, I usually make one a little bigger than the other when I'm cutting a ball in hand. So I'm going to use the bigger one for the 18 inch cone. And then this smaller piece, or if they're the same, it doesn't matter. But the smaller piece, you don't want that big of a head on this little guy. So to make this ball smaller, all I did was roll, pushing very hard on the edge of that ball. You're rolling it on the counter and it's making it smaller. <laughs> I have to push pretty hard and you can kind of hear when it's done kind of crunching then you you've about pushed it as far as it's going to go um, oh, Dondi, can you do that with all of our xps foams correct yes yes so you can see i made that ball that much smaller just by rolling it on the counter now, if you wanted it even smaller still, you could get um, a scrap piece of foam or like a metal rasp, and you could take away even more of this or just, just simply a knife and just cut some off, cut some away. But that took it down to about the size that I want for his small little head. So to put these on, all I did was a little glue, a little wooden pick, and the head. So that's that guy. And then this one, same thing, a little glue. in the top that's that guy so the good thing about using the foam for the head instead of a ball or a you know you'll see like people use like a Christmas ornament or a, a rubber ball or a Tupperware bowl or something for the top of a ghost head. The only reason, um, the good reason to use the foam is like you see, I added these cute little flowers. Um, you could you could poke in a wire and have a little bat flying above the ghost, or you could pin on a little hat to the top of the ghost. So it's just a it's just a good way to to secure things to their head. Now, Dondi, could you show how you put those flowers in inside their heads? Sure. 
I'll do this guy. So these are just silk flower stems. Just, just little metal um, silk flower stems. So all I did was took my scissors. Hmm. I had scissors here somewhere. <laughs> now you obviously get a new pair. All right, so just take your scissors and I just clipped a little slit in the top of the fabric. And then you just poke your little flower stems right into the foam. And I don't know that lights would work in here. Would they, would they show through the fabric? I'm not sure. So for this little guy, I did a, so this is a 12 inch cone. This is the six inch half ball that I rolled down into about a five inch half ball. And this little ghost uses a 26 by 26 fabric. And then all I did was I just rounded the corners a little, so it's really not even a circle, whatever that is, a stop sign. <laughs> um, so you don't have to make it perfectly round, but you can, or you can leave it square. That kind of gives it a little more jagged edge on it. So he is 26 by 26 on a 12 inch cone. And this guy is, this is a 44 by 44 inch square of fabric. That's on a six inch half ball with a 18 inch cone. This guy. And then our big guy. This one is um, 62 by 44. This is the one we did like the pillowcase and used the corners of the pillowcase to put his little arms in. And then the tomato cage ghost with the lights. is a 70 inch um, circle or square. All right, any questions on how to do any of them? Do you wanna see anything again? It doesn't look like there's any, but I love all of the ghosts. I will probably be using this to decorate my porch. <laughs> Good. I want to come see. <laughs> so would you like to see what um, we have? What is it? When, when is our next one? November. November. I'm going to find out. I'm going to go get it. And I'll, I'll let you know when it is. So this is a fall holiday project. So it starts out, you could put it up for like Thanksgiving-ish time. And then during the class, I will show you how to take it from fall to holiday very easily. And it looks like it will be November 13th. November 13th. And there was just one quick question about the foam. Someone okay. was wondering if the foam would last outside if it rains or what should we do if there's rain expected for that evening? It will absolutely hold up to rain. No problem. Yep. Well, let's get this guy up here. So this is the fall bird <laughs> with the little with the little turkey. He's been standing there so long, you guys. He just needed to stretch his legs. So 
So anyway, <clears throat> this is the fall version. Um, and then for the other, we take out the turkey, we take out the straw, we add some red berries, we add an ornament, and we make it Christmas. Ta-da! And this could actually have lights in it. So that's what's coming up. All right. Well, people love it. All right. All right. Let's pull these guys out for a last look. And there's no more questions. We'll get ready to say goodbye. Oh, it's camera. All right, guys. I'll put the little pumpkin in there. Okay, well, enjoy all those color changes if you're somewhere that that happens and get out there and decorate. They look great, Dondi. Thank you. Thanks. See ya.